This is Field Sports Channel News. If you've had your shotgun certificate renewed, you need to check it was backdated correctly. Basker investigating reports that some police forces have issued incorrect paperwork to applicants. Some have discovered their new certificates have been backdated by 12 months, which is contrary to the 1968 Firearms Act. Basque says it's happened when constabularies have issued Section 7 temporary permits to clear an admin backlog. The temporary permits have sometimes been in place for more than 12 months. Basque has asked anyone affected to get in touch with them. Link below. The Countryside Alliance has praised Suffolk Council for its rural fight back. As reported last week, the council was due to vote against following other local authorities by insisting on vegan food at council events. Instead, it elected to support local farmers, dairy producers and growers by pledging to use local produce including meat and dairy. Meanwhile, the Countryside Alliance in Scotland is considering taking the Scottish Government to court over the Hunting with Dogs Act. The new law bans the use of more than two dogs for hunting without special licensing. The licenses are issued by Scottish Government. The Alliance is investigating whether the research leading to the legislation is flawed. If so, this will lead to a legal challenge. We believe that Nature Scott have set an unreasonably high threshold to be able to achieve a license. And we have poured over every part of this, uh, th this guidance that's been produced as of our legal team and we think that most of it is quite unworkable and actually parts of it are unlawful and this is something that we're looking at very closely and, uh, and if we find this is the case then we will challenge this robustly. CCTV cameras are monitoring how people behave in the countryside. Cameras like this one are being fitted to monitor how many people are using rural locations in Jersey. Jersey's Natural Environment Department wants to know how many people are using specific sites on the island. There are fears this will lead to access bans if the authorities discover either overuse or underuse, with the horse riding lobby fearful it will lose bridleways. A French court has blocked an attempt by Antilles to ban marmot hunting. Six animal rights groups tried to get a judge to ban hunting the large ground squirrel. A court in Grenoble in the south of France rejected the application because marmots are common. There's been a huge increase in wildlife road traffic accidents in Norway. Norwegian highway authorities say the number of incidents has increased by 15% in the past two years. There have been 9,000 reported collisions between cars and moose and deer in that period. A survey discovered most accidents happen in the darker months between October and February. Thanks to Per Helmseth for the story. Australia is taking steps to cope with a rise in feral pig numbers. The New South Wales government has appointed a feral pig coordinator to run a $13 million programme to eradicate 87,000 wild pigs from the landscape. The programme includes training farmers how to cull. Hunting safari operators in Tanzania have revealed the extent of their unseen conservation work. A new film released this week by the Conservation Imperative explores projects which include opening a thousand kilometres of roads, resurfacing a bush airstrip and building dams for water provision. The work is in addition to their operations to stamp out illegal hunting, which has helped reduce poaching by 90%. Put in a lot of work, you know, to try and open up the, the infrastructure again, to open the roads, put in all year round roads to give us access to the area throughout the year. In the year that we've been there, we've opened up well over 1,000 kilometres of, of roads in the area. New Zealand's hunters are preparing for what's described as the largest hunting exhibition in Australasia. The annual Seeker Show takes place next week near Hamilton in the North Island and is celebrating its 30th anniversary. Last year's event attracted 165 exhibitors and 10,000 visitors through the doors over the weekend. And finally, a drone service that helps US hunters find shot deer is experimenting with extraction. Drone Deer Recovery, motto Leave No Deer Behind, uses thermal drones to help hunters find shot deer, with more than 30 operators across the USA. Drones are a controversial topic for US hunters, with some states seeking to ban their use for hunting. Now the firm is looking at recovering carcasses with the drones. Oh my gosh, there he goes, pigs do fly! Thanks to Richard Walton no for the story. Way. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking stories, fishing for facts.